Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is the former featherweight champion of the world, but now the baddest mother in the UFC. Oos from Hawaii, ladies and gentlemen. Max all the way. Yes. How are you, Oos? What's up, Pat, brother? Hey. I'm good, brother. How are you feeling? How are you feeling here two days removed? Well, I guess less than two days removed from that battle with Gaethje. I'm feeling like the blessed man forever. That's how I'm feeling right now. That's amazing. Leg, 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 uh, leg kind of hurts, man. I got kicks like a horse. You <laughs> saw a lot of that. Obviously, that's going to be a, a tactic to kind of take away your base, especially with how hard you throw. Just uh, being able to share the octagon was, uh, with him is just, he's a legend, man. He's a legend. I don't know if I'm ever going to share the octagon with him ever again. And UFC 300, the biggest card for probably the next decade. The BMF title, if, if, if this is not BMF worthy, I, I don't know what is. Well, it's certainly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you're a BMF. Uh -huh. I have been. 29 fights in the UFC. Obviously, 2012, you make your debut. I went through and read your resume again. You had four fights in the year 2012, uh, and then you had like three. The next, like, you're just a, how'd you get into this? How do we start this entire thing? Do you feel like you're representing for all of the islands of Hawaii whenever you step in there? And if you let them down, you can't fly back? Like, what is the mind? mindset and how did you get into this for sure for sure you know for, for you know from the island for the islands you know so that's just what it is you know where i'm from why not hawaii i mean everybody always says a joke you know when the ufc gyms came down to uh to oahu hawaii they said oh look the first ufc gym that was a lie the first ufc gym was uh why not high school where we from man the kids just fighting all the time so i got into it i got into it because i just wanted to be able to protect myself it, well, turns out everybody probably on the other side of that was like, uh, enough protecting yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're trying to protect ourselves mm -hmm. from this entire thing. I saw, obviously, kickboxing, uh, jujitsu in there, Muay Thai, I think, Ooh. but also boxing. Oh, you're an absolute stallion at. Are you still working on all of these? Are you still getting better, you think? Like, where do you put yourself right now versus maybe five, ten years ago? Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, MMA is a forever growing sport, and to stay with the pack, if you want to stay with it, you gotta you gotta keep growing, keep evolving. I, you're 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 an athlete, Brad. You know how it is with the game. You gotta evolve every year. If you stay the same, then you lose your job. You know. And I want to be a member of one of the greats in the sport. So that's that's just what you gotta do. You gotta keep evolving your sport. If you don't, then uh, it's gonna go right past you. Well, obviously, you're gonna be remembered forever. Uh, because of what happened at UFC 300 and everything else you've done before that. Now, the next conversation is, you know, who's next, who's next, who's next? That's That feels like the biggest UFC thing of all time. Immediately upon a fight being over, it's like, all right, call somebody out mm -hmm. or get called out <laughs> yeah. or do what you got to do here in your promo. I saw Elias send a tweet congratulating you, saying he'd be the first person to knock you out if you guys got in a ring together. Have you thought about the future? And... <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about the future and where are you right now with all of it? I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, about that tweet, he ain't the first one that said that, you know. Many guys did. The only guy who actually, I mean, it, it technically didn't count, you know, that put me on my butt was Gaethje this past Saturday. But uh, it, according to USC, uh, it didn't it didn't count as a countdown. So I guess so. my, my record is still clean. Though, clean! But yeah. we see what happens, you know. We see what happens, you know. If it's, if it's Elia at 145, his tone changed a lot, you know, he didn't want to fight, he didn't want to fight, and now he's coming around finally, because I don't know what he was thinking of saying that we don't deserve the title shot. And then, you know, with you know, 55 are having a BMF now, got some big fights coming up, we just wait and see, you know, wait, see, see what Dana White, see what uh, Dana White wants, we see what Hunter wants, and we'll figure it out. I don't know if you saw the press conference, Dana wants... Max all the way back in the octagon. Yeah. Dude. He knows the deal. And it feels like you know the deal, too. It feels like being an entertaining fighter is a part of your thing. Is that true, or am I misreading this? Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure, brother. You know, everybody think uh, fighting is fighting. Fighting is one thing, but we're entertainers at the end of the day. we got to say pay-per-views. And, and people got to gotta want to tune in, you know? You you see it all the time. Some guys are really good at fighting. It's just... This is getting no traction, you know. So this is we're in the entertainment business too. We saw Bo Nickel be upset about the way that he won his fight. I think because he hears the chirping about his fights, maybe more grappling, a little bit more boring, and he's working on his strikes. And I think a Cormier was like, "You should not be. You just tap the dude out. Like you should <laughs> yeah. not be upset." But it is reality of the situation. And do you think 
Did you chew on like rocks as a kid? Metal, mm. glass? Why do you think your jaw is is so strong? Legitimately, <laughs> why do you think it's just since birth? I, I I just think so. It's it's being a Polynesian, being from the islands, <laughs> being Hawaiian, Samoan, all that helps. No couple. Does that, that definitely helps, you know. The vibranium they probably implanted in my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the ooses are the best, dude. Yep. I wish I was an ooze. First of all, I wouldn't sunburn so quick. <laughs> but also, I'd be much tougher. Love your island. Love the people from there. Connor's got a question for you. Yeah, Max, your point about kind of like chasing greatness and wanting to be remembered as, you know, one of the greatest. Joe Rogan said that that was the greatest knockout in the history of the UFC, and he's been around a long time. When you hear stuff like that, what does it mean to you? And then when do you see when you see the reactions of Adesanya and Volkanovski and all those other guys, is that kind of even a bonus to see how impressive it was for them as well to see that knockout because it was absurd yeah for sure you know it's just amazing it, it, amazing to see people react and then to see my, my my peers react is even more crazy you know watching fighters geek out like fans it's uh it's pretty it's a pretty cool thing to see and then to hear joe rogan talk about it like that and even dana white i think dana white said that's the that's the craziest holy shit moment he yeah. had and He's probably going to see for a long time. So, you know, hopefully we can top it. You know, everybody always thinks that there's one moment, but, you know, hopefully we can replicate it and, and do it better. A buzzer beater knockout. Oh, yeah. I, I don't Tough it, to One beat. second. How many times have you watched it back? Have you watched it a thousand times? You should. <laughs> Ty has a question for you. Max, you mentioned how, you know, Gaethje kicks like a horse and you're kind of feeling it in your leg right now. And then Pat alluded to, like, uh, you know, you fighting multiple times during the year what is the recovery process like after a fight like this because you obviously you're throwing so many punches you know like you're you're going deep and all that kind of stuff like do you ever go into the octagon feeling 100 percent? or now that you've been doing it this long is like you just you're dealing with shit no matter what yeah yeah i think so i think so in any sport you, you go in there you're not you're never ever 100 percent. but you get try, you try to be pretty close you know you try to be pretty close to that and then the recovery time you know hopefully uh Hopefully a week or two I'll be fine and, and then we go from there. You know, I, I, a lot of people, a lot of people like to like to call me like Wolverine and stuff because after yeah. after a week or so I'm back on it. You know, it's just like like I said, man. He, the punches with Gaethje wasn't he hits hard. Don't get me wrong, but when we was in that last ten seconds, he was missing that the wind was hitting hitting me and it, it hurt. You know, so <laughs> but his kicks, brother. The guy kicks like a donkey or something. I don't know what <laughs> kangaroo coming off his head. The, the guy kicks hard. I love that. Uh, I enjoy the respect you have for him as well mm -hmm. because after watching the fight, it's like I hope these two warriors know that what they are doing for us is awesome. And you talk about the strikes and everything. There's a bunch of stats coming out about your historic career right now. Total strikes landed in the history of the UFC, 3,622, obviously. About a 1,000 more in second place. And then significant strikes landed, a couple thousand more than everybody else. You're an absolute monster, pal. Absolute monster. Are you back in the gym in like a week or two? Or when, how does this, do you have to, like, like, I think we talked to Michael Chandler. And congrats to him, finally getting yeah, yeah. up. Conor McGregor yeah. fight on the books. Yeah, uh, that's good for him. He talked about how, like, it's just his lifestyle. Like, if he doesn't train, he doesn't feel like he's doing life. Are you the same way? Are you always in the gym, remain in the gym? Or what is the – how do we continue to go day-to-day -day here? Uh, you know, we see what happens. You know, I, I – I, uh, my son wasn't able to make it this fight. We promised him a trip to uh, to to somewhere. So, we got to do that first. But – yeah, man, I, I, I'm not like that. If I if I uh, if I miss the gym, it's not the end of me. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be like that. Yeah, and sometimes uh, sometimes I don't want to see some of the people at the gym. You know, my strength and conditioning coach. I mean, I tell him all the time, brother. I I don't like I do not like seeing your face because every time I see his face, it's gonna be a tough day. Well, that's you know, inevitably, that's why the fifth round at the end after. One second knockout to still have the energy to oh, do yeah. the mm -hmm. full yeah. celebration afterwards. Like I'm puking. 30 seconds into round one. You go five rounds, Ugh. literally the longest fight, knockout fight in the history of the UFC with one second left. And then the juice afterwards is remarkable. What is the sparring like going in to fighting somebody like Gaethje? Brother, like, so, you know, before, uh, we, we gave out sparring, just like how you said, because, like, it, we have so many wars, and, like, I've been training so long that I felt like we just needed to be able to move with some of these guys, and and even with my training partners, you know, like if we start going hard and they got to give me a certain look and they, they start, you know, like even me, if I got to give a certain look for to someone and I start getting beaten up and I know my look 
is going to be better than the look that I need to give. I'm going to go to that because no one likes to lose, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. So I was doing this point where it was like speed, so these guys could could give me the look that I needed. But for Justin Gaethje, brother, brother, this is this is like going to the gates of hell. You know, <laughs> this man, you know what I mean? So we, we had to bring sparring back, bro. You know, I had to cut the hair. We had to go back to, to the old ways. And uh, we did we, we, we did sparring, man. We got after it. You know, shout out to my shout out to my teammates, shout out to my coaches. We, we, we did the damn thing this one, bro. It was a it was a tough camp, a hard camp, a hard 10 to 12 weeks. And I, I'm just happy that we got to get our hand raised after it. Hell yeah. Congrats to the entire camp. Performance of the night, fight of the night. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, whatever you're getting paid for the fight, and now your BMF. Ch- I mean, let's go, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. What a let's Saturday. What a Saturday in Vegas. D Butt's got a question for you, Matt. Hey, speaking of that, so 10 to 12 week training camp, unbelievable fight all the way down to the wire. You talked about an unbelievable Pat just brought up unbelievable Saturday night in Vegas. What was that post fight celebration like? You know, obviously you had that energy. We talked about your Wolverine blood, how quick you heal. But what was that night like after obviously that incredible weekend? Brother, I, I, I had so many friends and family come out to the fight. We just uh, we just went to a hotel bar and we just kicked it for a little bit and then not go sleep until like <laughs> five o'clock in the morning, brother. It, was, it, it, it wasn't like a party or whatever we went to the club. We, I just had a bunch of like 20, 20 to 30 good people that just lived with, uh, that grew up with me, who was around me for a long time. And, you know, just kept it intimate, you know, we didn't, I don't really like going out and going doing too much stuff, but I just I just uh, you know shared that time with the people who dedicated, especially with my wife. You know, I gotta give my wife. I give her hell for freaking twelve weeks at a, at twelve weeks at a time. So uh, she, I, I'm a lot to deal with, brother. So just to be able to hang out with her is uh, means a lot. How's your surfing? Speaking of your wife, can you? I assume you can surf because you're from Hawaii. Is that an asshole assumption? <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's pretty asshole or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. My my wife is a professional. I like to I like to talk like I'm I'm better. You know, you gotta pick the game, but uh, I'm I'm terrible. I'm terrible. <laughs> my, little boy, my little boy's getting better. I love my little boy's getting super good at it, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Every time I go out there, I go to the island a lot. Oh, look at you! Wow, I see rotten barrels, dude. I see you out there yeah. doing your thing. I know, I know some of the lingo because my wife and I, we love Hawaii. Mm. That's our place. Like we go to, and whenever we're hanging out wherever we are, I always look down at the ocean, and you just see a bunch of these little kids hopping on these, and it's like absurd. I'm scared to death to go out there, but I got nothing but respect for those who do. Sharks and shit are out there, <laughs> Max. Oh, brother, brother, next. And what? You know, like, that's their house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, I mean? you saw what you could do. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm not doing that to a shark. You know what I mean? You're probably punching that thing in the nose, doing that. I'm oh, getting yeah. eight. I'm out of there. I'm dead. Dead McAfee brother, is shark, the story. Shark, no, sharks only bite if you touch the private part, bro. We don't know okay. this. Okay. <laughs> You just can't, oh. can't be I doing that. Can't be touching a dong of a shark. <laughs> okay, good. No, I just no. learned that. I just learned that. All right, last question here from Tone, Max. We appreciate you. Yeah, Max, I saw Pereira got his uh, black belt after getting his win this weekend. Uh, do you know, are you going to be getting your black belt now in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu now that you got your win this weekend at 300? Is that how that works? Uh, brother, my, my, I, it's funny that you guys talked about this because we were just talking about this after the fight when we saw it happen. My coach is the most stingiest guy, brother. Uh, <laughs> giving us belts, giving us stripes, and I tease him all the time. I'm like, bro, you're stingy with it. And you know how much guys come to our gym and they're like, you're not, you're not a brown belt. What, what are you? You're not a pro. Or they tell like the pro belts or blue belts. You're not a blue belt. What do you do? You're sandbagging. You know, like, no, nah, our coach is just, our coach is hardcore about it. But uh, right now, I got to deal with my coach. I want to be the first MMA black belt. There's one of my boys that got me to with this coach. His name is Dusty Kimura, former UFC fighter. And uh, me and him is on the race to get our black belt. Like he, he's better than me in jiu-jitsu, but with me getting my, my card stamp and stuff, I think I'm closer to getting my black belt before him. So black belt jiu-jitsu, you said MMA black belt. That's just like all fighting forms, no, I mean, I'm a black belt. I, I, no, I mean, I mean, I wanted to be his first MMA fighter mm. with a black belt. He don't have an MMA fighter with a black belt yet. Got it, got it, got it. Well, I think he deserves it. I mean, yeah. 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 I don't know how the game works. I think some people are just handing out black belts. From I mean, I, I search the internet in some places. You know, there's some Fugues black belts. Oh, yeah. From what I've been told oh, and no. what I read. I don't. They, 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 next time next time I'm going to show them, I see Pat with a, 
where the hell you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> One time at a dojo, dropped a couple uh, hundred thousand, <laughs> just like a degree in college. Uh, you know, you could kind of pull it off. Max, congratulations. We're lucky to watch you do your thing, brother. That's real. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Hey, when you're back out in a while, let me know, brother. We take you surfing. We take you. Let's go get. Let's go get in some waves. I'm not going in the water, but I'll watch it. <laughs> Come on, get I'm, out there, brother. I'm not, brother I, I look you, at the water. You. I don't get in the water. Brother, you got to get in the water one time. One time. I got this hole in my eardrum. Yeah. Sharks out there. <laughs> can't do it. And I just get high and look at the water. Yep. Love your islands, though. Love everything about them. Just like I appreciate the hell out of you, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. You guys have a good one. Thank you for having me. Safe travels back to Hawaii. That's the baddest mother in the UFC. Ladies and gentlemen, Max Holloway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what a legend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dog. Just Oos who just beats people's ass. Yeah. 29 fights in the UFC since 2012. That's so, so many. He's not undefeated. Obviously, he's taken some uh, split decision losses, unanimous decision losses. He picked up fights like within the last few days or yeah. a few days before the fights because people get injured. He's fight it. He's fought everybody. Yeah. But I mean, this vid this knockout is going to be remembered for the rest of time. Mm -hmm.